Facebook.com. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm well. I'm excited to be chatting with you because I thoroughly enjoyed Minx and you in Minx. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I really did. Yeah. So uh, for one thing that kept popping up in my mind watching um, all the episodes was, I wonder what she thought when she first read the script. So mm. my first question is like, what popped into your mind when you went through the script for the first time? Well, um, I was reading it and the first thing that really popped out to me was the penis montage. And I was <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> That's happening. Um, right. <laughs> um, and just actually the writing, the writing was just incredibly funny, mm -hmm. um, really smart. I thought that um, it was handling some really racy subject matter in a really smart, clever way and a way that we could like laugh about it and open up conversation that way. Um, and that's what I loved most about it. Yeah, and so, you know, that kind of answers my second question, which was, uh, what was it about Minx that informed your decision to be a part of the project? And to your point, I thought it was incredibly clever. It was yes. bold, it was daring, it was funny, and I wasn't expecting it to be all those things, so it was such a pleasant, pleasant surprise once I was in it. Yeah, I, you know, and I felt like all of the characters are written in a really dynamic way, um, so specific to sort of create these different archetypes and this sort of, I don't know, land of misfits that they <laughs> embody at bottom dollar. Um, and, you know, it just felt like a place where it was a workplace comedy, even though, you know, they were in the porn industry and they're dealing with, you know, dildos and all of these things. Yeah. It felt like a really smart, sort of raunchy in, in an adult way that everybody everybody could have fun with. I felt like it was the kind of thing that, you know, you could like watch with your grandmother if she was, you know, open. <laughs> it just like weirdly feels wholesome even though you're dealing with such, you know, strong subject matter and, and you're dealing with sexuality. And, you know, I, I think it's really fun the way they deal with it. Agreed. I mean, it's funny that you mentioned watching it with great with, the, with your grandmother because I could see myself watching this with my mother and right. we have a good time chuckling and just absorbing and relating on different levels. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. That sort of dynamic. Right. And that's always my litmus test. I'm right. always like, can I watch this with my Nigerian parents who, you know what I mean? <laughs> but this felt like one that I could, you know? I was like, I think my mom would have fun with this, you know, so yeah. And I can relate to that because I'm Kenyan. So, you know, my okay. Kenyan mother yeah. would relate to this, which would be right. curious for me to experience her watching this. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely, yeah. I absolutely loved um, your character, Tina's introduction, right? I thought yeah. it set her up <laughs> in such a beautiful way because instantly I got like, oh, she's strong. She's uh -huh. old, she's sassy, she's funny, she's a boss in her own right. Uh -huh. um, how would you describe Tina? I think Tina is a, a hustler, for sure. Yeah. Really smart. Um, I love that she is very unapologetic. She speaks her mind. And, you know, my end with Tina was I just kept trying to understand why a woman so smart and mm -hmm so much to offer would stay for 10 years in a position as a secretary. And I was like, what is it about this job that would make Tina say, okay, I'm gonna stick this out and be here. Cause she seems like a person who's like a go-getter. You know, she didn't, she doesn't strike me as a woman who wants to sort of just get into a comfortable position and stay. Um, and so what I found interesting was that her job at Bottom Dollar gave her an autonomy that I don't think she would have found in a lot of other corporate settings. And she was able to, you know, speak her mind freely. She was able to share her ideas and know that they were going to be utilized. Um, she had this rapport with Doug yes. where she just, you know, be really plain with him about things. And so um, I love that when Joyce shows up, she's like, I'm going to let you know who I am right off top, you know, and, um, and jokes with Doug about it so that they're, you know, she's always checking in with him to see does he see what she's seeing? Does he agree with it? Um, because whatever Tina sort of says goes mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways, you know? 
Yeah. Um, but she does it through Doug. She does it with Doug. So she acts like a, you know, a partner with him. And I don't know at that time if she would have found that kind of um, a relationship dynamic with her boss in a lot of other settings. So true. Oh, so much of that resonates with me. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and speaking of Tina and Doug, I loved their working relationship. I mean, there were moments where I was like rooting for them to have like something on the side and I wasn't quite sure what was going right. on. But can you talk a bit about the chemistry uh, between you and Jake off screen and how it um, informed the on screen obvious chemistry? Yeah, Jake, um, you know, Jake's from Chicago and he reminded me a lot of the guys that I grew up with um, in New York, um, he just has this soul about him that made it easy to be real with him. And um, I think that was necessary for the Tina and Doug dynamic to work. And he's so collaborative. So when we would start you know, working on the scenes together and we didn't really know who Tina and Doug were yet. And a lot of that, the complexities of their relationship were being woven in episode by episode. So we weren't sure where it was going. And so we were like, okay, this is a really special kind of unique relationship dynamic that's been written here. How do we like take this off the page and make this live with each other? And, um, and so we just had each other's back in a certain kind of way. And, you know, he's so charming. And so he can make things that, you know, are, would be sleazy seem like it's no big deal or whatever. And, um, and so it made it easy to laugh with him. You know, our scenes were very like, we would be shooting and laughing a lot of the time. Um, we would always check in with each other after each take to be like, did you feel like you got what you wanted out of that? Or, you know, and so it just felt like this really collaborative process, which made our scenes fly by. Like we would shoot them in just a few takes and be done usually, um, unless they were looking for just different things to play with because they weren't sure which direction they were gonna take the scene. Um, but we really just, I, I, it just felt like we were like friends, buddies. Um, there was a soul about the connection and about the relationship that I just felt made it so easy. So those wound up being some of my favorite scenes to shoot. Yeah, I was certain you guys had either worked together in the past or there was like some undercover relationship that we're not privy to. Right. Um, the, the magic and the respect also was just, it was so obvious. Um, which, you know, made Tina and Doug's characters um, all the more lovable to me. Mm. But I, every scene you both were in, I looked forward to that. Oh, good. I did. I, I did. that because our first scene, you know, in the pilot, that was a last minute scene that was written, the scene between us in his office, mm. um, where we're like, where I, I basically, you know, tell him I'm not sure about this one. Right. And um, it was a last minute scene written while we were shooting the pilot. And uh, it was something, it just felt so special when we shot it. We were like, there is really something here. And they said that when they sent the pilot out and tested, it was a scene that people just kept on asking about, like, what is that relationship? What is that thing between Tina and Doug? And um, yeah, I think, I think we all recognized a certain chemistry and connection between the two of us that could really work. So I'm glad they put it out, you know? Oh yeah, it's so obvious, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looked like such a fun production like the kind of job or project I would want to go to every day just because you never know what's happening could you walk yeah. me through like a work day or a memorable something it was ridiculous like our set was just a ridiculous <laughs> place to be because we had okay so I don't know if you noticed it but um there is this group of women that are like the centerfolds of all of the different bottom dollar publications and they're always in some new themed outfit so each episode and it would usually be something from the previous episode so like if we did an episode about the girl scouts then the next episode they'd be in like girl scout sashes with like dirty patches and things like that you know mm -hmm. um and they were just like a fun like this band of women that would just be in the background um, but they were always my introduction when I'd arrive to set, I'd see one of those women, like, I'd just be like, in, and they were usually tall, so I'd be like in contact with one of their boobs or something, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay, here we are, you know, <laughs> um, but they were so funny and so smart, and they were like always my in, walking in, but once I got on set, it was like all my fellow actors, we'd be 
they they'd be making all kinds of jokes. We'd have to like come up with the best one hit wonders of all time and be like singing those and dancing, coming up with different dance routines. Oscar Montoya is a, is a dancer and choreographer. So he'd be coming up with dance routines and Jessica mostly would be doing them. And sometimes I'd join. Um, and it was just, you know, every day we had something new that was happening on set. You know, one day it's a snake, one day it's a, it's always something new. And I think everyone just had fun on set. So it never felt like work. We just laughed the entire time. Um, you know, when I first started going, I would see they had these dildos that would like stick onto cabinets and things like that. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want them anywhere near my desk, you know? And then by the end, I'd be like tossing them to the side to get out of my way. <laughs> I just got so used to it. Um, and that's what it was like. It was like, you know, it really did just feel like a workplace environment. You got very used to a lot of the nudity that was on set. It didn't feel like people were being sexualized that way. So that was the cool part about it was that it just felt like a really safe set. Like we were just having a good time and we were just embracing the fact that, you know, we all have a body and they all look different and let's just celebrate this, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. I, oh, I could imagine. I did appreciate, you know, the perspective of the female gaze because often mm -hmm film and TV, it's all about the male gaze. So I like that that was included in this. I mean, you know, the, the, the male gaze was definitely there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it was refreshing and it kind of made it, um, it sort of normalized it. Cause I don't know why we're so hung up on, you know, seeing penises, like it's a part yes. of who we are. <laughs> yes, yes. That's exactly, that was my journey actually throughout. I mean, I've never been, I've always felt like I'm a pretty open-minded person, but um, that that was my journey on that set was really to be like, why do we ever make this a big deal? I mean, at the end of the day, these are just bodies. And, you know, we weren't privy to the whole penis montage. We only, you know, had one actor that we had to like have a scene with, and then they did that separately from us. But in general, you know, having those, having people on set in different states of, dressed or undressed never felt like people were being sexualized or like it didn't feel like this taboo thing it felt like it was taking the layers off of any sort of sense of taboo right. and just making it like you know these are these are bodies we all have them let's just let's enjoy this process you know like we're just we're making fun of um ourselves in a way and how serious we can be about these things you know yeah. which are appreciated yeah <laughs> And also let's embrace our bodies and let's- Yes, more. yes. And I definitely think that came from the women that were at the helm of this. You know, I mean, we had a female showrunner, we had a female director, we had uh, a women cinematographer for the pilot episode. Um, and they were, it was amazing watching them collaborate and come up with ideas together. And I felt a different level of trust than I think I've ever felt on a set in terms of what they might come up with, what idea they might throw out next. I always felt like it would somehow be something that I would feel comfortable with because it was coming from the female gaze, you know? Yeah. And it made me curious to see a lot more material that comes from the female gaze to see how would we handle that same subject matter, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely made for a lack of objectification of people in a, in a, in a way, you know, even though we were, showing them off, you know? Right. Yeah, well stated. And you may have already answered this question. Um, the question was, did being a part of this project change or shift your POV as an actor in any way? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing that it shifted for me. I had a, a whole reckoning because there was a moment where um, there was a scene that was shot where I felt, I wasn't sure I was comfortable with myself being portrayed or not even portrayed because it wasn't even the way I was portrayed it was just me in in a scene like in a frame with you know the term the, a certain term and, and and penises and I was just like I don't know you know because I started thinking especially as a black woman these are considerations that we you know have to take on that you know there are historical contexts to things and I was like, I don't want to do anything that could in any way make a, a Black woman anywhere feel like she was violated or somehow not respected or whatever. And it was a real reckoning for me because I was like, 
well, as a black woman, why do I have to portray myself always in one way? Which is like, why does black excellence only have to look like, okay, I am stoic and I am, you know, present presentable in the most, I don't know, um, um, puritanical way or whatever, you know, like what is that sense of, you know, not associating myself with certain things in terms of sexuality. And I really came to a reckoning about that. Like, you know, I have to portray women everywhere. I had a friend who said, you know, this image that I'm looking at reminds me of my aunt who was very much like this woman, like, like Tina in the seventies. And she was a boss. She was making it happen. And she was a black woman. And she put herself in situations where she was like, you know, this is, this is what's happening. Okay. I'm, I'm with it. And she didn't sort of sense herself that way. And so I realized for the first time that I was censoring myself and I was like, you know, I'm going to remove myself from that paradigm and just, you know, I've always been somebody that felt art was an opportunity for us to showcase all of humanity, all the different sides. And it helped me to really come to terms with that and go, okay, well then you got to come to terms with the fact that there's a woman that might be more comfortable with that lifestyle than you, you know, you didn't, you didn't work in the porn industry. She does right. for been working in 10 years, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that helped me, you know, really continue to expand my mind about what's possible for us as actors and in our portrayal of things. And again, that female gaze, I just trusted that in the end. I was like, you know, at the end of the day, I trust the context. I trust the women at the helm of this. And I know that it's going to come out right. And it did, you know, it really did. Yeah, and trust is a big part of that. Like it's yeah. the glue for all of that to actually come to fruition. So I, I yeah. definitely get that. Um, before I let you go, I have to ask you this. What are your two dream roles? Because I can see you either running <laughs> something or ruling someplace. Oh. Right? I, the energy you're giving off. Yes, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, the two that are coming to mind right now, and it's funny that you say that, uh, because one of them is um, the role of a queen. Like I, I want to play, yeah, I want to, like there are, you know, there are there are so many queens, like African queens that I've learned about, you know what I mean, over the years. And I'm like, I need to see more films like that. You know, I need to see, I would love to play a role like that. And I know we've got like the woman king coming and we've got certain things that are finally tapping into that but I would love to play a role like that. And then um, like Queen Nana, like there's so many, but I would love to play a role like that. Um, and then uh, Michelle Obama, actually. It would be fun to one day, you know, do her, play her. Like, and I would love to play her like after the presidency, after, you know, the years, the years after, mm -hmm. you know. Um, gotcha. so that's one that I want to do down the road, but I would love to like, what her life is like after you know that's a great angle after the fact yeah oh, ooh, you are speaking you, this to existence yes yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and i would love to revisit and have this conversation once you've played this role and we that can that would be amazing that that would, be <laughs> let's just put it in the books now yes it's, done. it's happening it's, it's happening done. Thank you so much for talking with BlackFilm.com. We are such huge fans and we are just looking forward to the rest of your career. Thank it's going to be so great. Much. Appreciate. If you Pleasure. want more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell on BlackFilm.com's YouTube page.